In this problem, we're asked to simplify several expressions that contain the square root of a negative number. So let's review a couple of things before we do this. The first is the definition of the imaginary unit i is defined to be i is the square root of negative 1, where i squared equals negative 1. And using that definition, it allows us to find the square root of a negative number. So as long as b is a positive real number, then the square root of negative b is i the square root of b. So let me just explain that a little bit. The square root of negative b can be written as the square root of negative 1 times b, which is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of b. And what's the square root of negative 1? It's defined to be i the square root of b. So that's broken it down in detail, but normally, given this, we can immediately cut to the chase and say it's i the square root of b. But remember, this only works if b is a positive real number. So let's look at our first example here. The first thing is we're going to convert it into the i format because I have the square root of a negative number. So it's going to become i times the square root of 121. And you already know how to solve radicals, so hopefully you remember that this 121 is a perfect square. So this is i times, what's the square root of 121? 11. So this is just 11 times i. So that is our first example simplified. The second problem, again, the first thing we're going to do is convert it into the i format because I have the square root of negative 75. So it's going to become i the square root of 75. So now how do we simplify the square root of 75? Let's factor it. Let's pick two factors, one of which is a perfect square, 25 times 3. So this I can write as i times the square root of 25 times 3. Then using the product property of radicals, I could write that as i times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And what's the square root of 25? 5. So it's going to become 5i times the square root of 3. And that is our second example simplified. In some textbooks, you might see the answer written as 5 the square root of 3 times i, which is great if it's in a textbook and it's typeset, and you can definitely tell i is not underneath the square root sign. But in my normal handwriting, if I wrote this, it's like, is that i underneath the square root or not? Who knows? So it's always better to write it in this format. So let's look at one last example, and that is the square root of negative 96. Remember, the first thing is we're going to write it in the i format because I've got the square root of a negative number. The square root of negative 1 is i. Pull that out. I get i times the square root of 96. And now all I've got to do is factor out my 96. There are lots of different ways of doing this. Today I feel like just saying, well, it's even. 2 goes into 96. 48 times. 48 is even, so it's 2 times 24. 24 is even, it's 2 times 12. 12 is even, it is 2 times 6. It's getting a bit boring. And 6 is 2 times 3. So I have a pair here and a pair here. So I can write this as i times the square root of the first 2 times 2 is 4. That's taken care of this one. 2 times 2 is 4 here. That's taken care of that one. And there are no perfect squares left here, so 2 times 3 is 6. So this is i times, 
the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which is i times the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of the second 4 is 2, times the square root of 6. So what's my answer? 2 times 2 is 4, i the square root of 6. So there's my simplified answer. And this one would have been a lot more efficient if we'd have figured out that 96 is 16 times 6. And then we would have said, what's the square root of 16? It's 4. The square root of 6 can't be simplified. As I said, 96 has many different ways of factoring it, but you'll always lined up at the same answer.